Okay, number. Let's go with this first question here. Automotive electronics test seven. Uh, the charging system of a vehicle equipped with an onboard computer control charging system is undercharging. Undercharging. It means you hook up your charging system tester and it's reading eleven and a half volts or whatever. A lab scope connected to the ground side of the alternator field indicates a ninety percent duty cycle. Now, what does a ninety percent duty cycle mean? That means it's mostly, well, I mean, what a, it can, 100% is when it's on all the time, right? And 90% is when it's on all but 10% of the time, right? Technician A says the alternator may need to be replaced. Technician B says the onboard computer may need to be replaced. What is that? The computer. The computer? Come on. Keeping it on. Okay, do you know what it means to fulfill an alternator? Okay. Uh, the, what we do in here, whenever we're, you know, the the spinning part of the alternator that's on the inside of it, you know, which is you got your, you know, these claws and all that kind of stuff, you know, like this right here. That's got north and south poles in there. And there's a, inside of this, around this core, there's a winding in there. There's a, a copper winding. And out here on your brushes, yeah. on these brushes, you're, you're actually putting uh, B plus in on one. And the other one is going to get a ground, but that ground is actually controlled by your voltage regulator or your computer if your computer is regulating the voltage, right? Okay, so what your computer does is it is actually also monitoring the B+. Plus, okay, with your voltage regulator, your computer, whatever is monitoring the B+. Plus. If it sees low voltage, which is going to see if the alternator is undercharging, then it's going to cause this switch to be closed more than it's open. If you happen to take this terminal right here, like on a Chrysler alternator, you got two little wires coming to the back of it, right? One of them is coming from the ASD relay. The other one comes from the PCM. All right, if you ground the one coming from the PCM artificially with a jumper wire, the alternator is just full feet. I mean, like, it'll go 16, 17, 18 volts. It'll go away on up beyond what your headlight bulbs can handle. Got that? So if this is at 90%, and it's really busting its fanny to make that alternator put out. And the alternator is not putting out. Does that mean your computer's bad? No. No, it's doing what it's supposed to do. So you can't replace it. If you replace the PCM, you spent $800, and now you still got your same problem. Who pays for the computer? The parts department ain't going to take it back. Got it? It's going to be the alternator. Technician A's right on that one. I need you to think inside the box as well as outside the box. Technician A says, before performing a voltage output test, a visual inspection and preliminary check of the charging system should be done. Right? Technician B says, voltage output test will indicate if the charging system is working properly. Now, what did I tell you guys also about your charging system? If you're checking a charging system on any vehicle and you switch on that key, you better be looking for that red battery light. Just about every vehicle's got a red battery. If it ain't got a red battery, you're still going to have to have some current going out there to turn on the regulator, right? So if you don't see that red battery light, if it's got a red battery light, and you don't see it, you better find out why. I thought it was just not. when you first turn it on, right? When you first turn it on, if I it ain't working, it huh? I you just turn it on the key. If you just switch on the key and you see that red battery light is not on, there's no need to do anything else until you find out why that red battery light ain't on. Okay. I, mean, I don't know if mine is. Huh? I was just saying, I don't know if mine is. Yeah. Well, when you turn it on, mo most of them, not, you know, not every single vehicle out there, but most of them have got a red battery light. And it's always important to find out if that light's working or not. Because a regulator, a voltage regulator, is like any other electrical piece of equipment, it's got to be turned on. Yeah. And it gets turned on through that light. And whenever it's not putting out, it grounds that circuit going back to that light, and the light comes on, on the car. The light can be on, and the charging system still be working. On a, all the old GM cars, if you had, if you switched off the key and the all and a battery, an alternator light stayed on the charge light, uh, it would uh, be a bad positive diode in the alternator. With the key off, alternator light on. Now some of the Chevys, and I don't understand the the choke on the carburetor was heated up by the uh, wire coming off the stator on the alternator. So the stator wire would heat the choke up, so when the engine was running, the choke would get hot and it would open up within about 90 seconds after you started it. So GM, for some strange reason, decided they were going to put a choke light, a yellow light that said choke. So when the alternator, if you saw the yellow choke light on it, it's the alternator's not putting out. <laughs> or that wire doesn't. Okay, I mean, 
one way or another, technician A says, before performing an output test, visual inspection, preliminary check, that's right, make sure all the wires are plugged in. <coughs> what is another part of your preliminary check if you're charging system? Check, see what's Let's make darn sure that the big post coming out of the alternator is hot. If I go to the negative side of my battery, my test light, and I go to the positive side of the alternator, that big wire, you know what I'm saying, a big wire, if that sucker's not hot, there's no use in even starting the car. It's always supposed to be hot. Key on, key off, whatever. And a lot of these vehicles now, between that post and the rest of the car, there's a big old fuse. That Ranger's got a 175-amp fuse on there. Okay? All right, now then. Technician, so he's right. Technician B says a voltage output test will indicate if the charging system is working properly. You know, yeah, sort of. But there's a lot of the C is their answer they're wanting on there. But if you just if all you have is a voltmeter, you're not going to do be doing a comprehensive test of that charging system. But you can tell a little something about it. You can hook your even your jumper. You know, your jumper pack when you hook that hooker up. If you push that little button after you start the car and that thing goes on up strong in the green, you know. Incidentally, I fixed that other jumper pack out there where you can plug it in, the one that had the loose, you know, prongs on it. Uh, the 100-amp AC generator produces 105 amps all the time. Full fielding, it produces 105 amps also. What does this indicate? A, a the regulator is running the AC generator full fill all the time. B, the AC generator is faulty. C, the output wire has excessive resistance. Or D, the drive belt is slipping. That's number A. He's right. A is right. The uh, regulator is running it all full fill all the time. Here's a brief little story. Motorhome comes in, overcharge it. Whenever you, rev, whenever you rev it up, it overcharges. Okay? So when you rev it up and it overcharges, what does that typically mean? Typically means you've got a bad regulator, right? I mean, the regulator is built into the alternator on that one. If the PCM controls the field on the alternator, you're going to call that alternator a generator. If the alternator has got a stand, I mean, a regulator that's separate from the PCM, you're going to call it an alternator. See what I'm saying? It's only called a generator if the PCM is controlling the field. You got that? I'm going to ask you a question. My yeah. truck does the same thing. Like, if I'm going down the road going like 55, yeah. my bright lights get brighter and they start smoking. If I slow down, they start dimming down. My bulk goes down. Yeah, well, you can look at charging system test drive. It would be a good thing to do to see how it's doing. You may have issues. May I? Headlight off the other day? Yeah. It's gone. Like blow. Did you touch it with your fingers when you was putting it in? I don't think so. Like, you? Not the, it's not the thing on the inside. Like on the inside of the bulb, the cool. filament. Yeah. Yeah, that filament. Yeah. It's the wire going down into the plug. It's broke. Oh yeah, well that'll that'll be uh, isn't it? you didn't blow the ball. I mean you just got to fix those wires. Who was that? that was working on me the other day? It may have been Zach when we Miss Goosby's car. We went to work on the uh, headlight because the left one was out, and we put another bulb in it. And when we plugged it in, we just you know popped the bulb in there and plugged it. In. It still didn't work. When we unplugged it, the connector was burned up. But they had another connector, believe it or not, for three dollars and something at the parts house. It was perfect for that. So we. You know, heat shrink and put it together and all that, and make it look factory again. Popped it back in. She had good headlight. You got a situation like that. You got to fix your wires. Well, I'm talking about in the bulb. Oh, you mean the, the wire in the bulb broke? Like it goes down into where you plug it in. Yeah. In the bulb. Well, is it look like it was faulty or is it burned I mean, in too? It it's black. Yeah. Where it's broke. Well, uh, we need to tell Brett about that. He may send you a new bulb. You tell him that one didn't last. It burned out. You know, I mean, with that. If that was a faulty bulb, and I think that bulb was one of them, how much it cost? Like three bucks. As that was a Chinese made bulb, no surprise. You know, a good bulb cost you about ten bucks. Sylvania. You're gonna give me that one. Yeah, this one don't fit. Or does it? It does. It does. Well, we okay. can get you, a, you, we can, you can temporarily put this in there, sir, but we're gonna make him give you another one because that's the deal. Actually, this one belongs to the school and I can't give it away. You know what I'm saying? If I, no, I, could, I could, I could, I could tell you, but then I'd have to kill you, right? No, it's fine. But, I mean, that, that's actually one that I got in stock for the state cars in case I have to have one for them. And I just, you know, sometimes we need one real fast. But, um, so where are we at? What components make the AC generator? Oh, I was going to tell you about the motorhome. When I revved it up, it would, bam, it would peg out. So I pulled it off, put a regulator on it, put it back together, just like it was. Revved it up, peg out. You know what the problem was about it? This rotor was self-fulfilling itself. It was shorted inside, 
and the centrifugal force would cause it to touch somewhere in there to make it fire. So I had to put an alternator on it. And uh, we put an alternator on that Taurus that day because it's making noise. Okay, what components make up the AC generator fuel circuit? Now, what is the fuel circuit? Wait, look at this. This is the fuel circuit that I just drew. You know what I've left out of this? I mean, I've, as far as an alternator goes, I've left out the diodes. Okay. I've left out the stator that this spins inside of. See, the pulley is actually out here. This is the pulley right here. The pulley spins that inside that stator. The stator being that, see that wire coil that's you know, shaped like a circle over there? That's the stator. And the, see, the part below that, that's that horseshoe-looking part on that particular alternator there, are where the diodes are. Uh -oh. so you got six diodes in there. You got three positive, three negative diodes. And you got three legs coming off that stator. And they hook right to the center. Those diodes are coming together, all point in one direction. They hook right to the center. One side of those diodes is grounded, the other side is going to the hot side. And whenever that current that's being created by this spinning magnetic field is created in that stator, it's going to make a sort of a cute little ripple. And it's going to create enough juice to come out. But how much it creates is determined by this switch that is controlled by your voltage regulator or your PC. Everybody understanding that, right? Okay, now that light, the voltage regulator is another part that I left out. In other words, you could have this, and you could have the, uh, of course, that, that switch right there is actually a part of the voltage regulator. But you could have all of this right here and that, but if you don't have anything to control that field, then what are you going to have? You're going to have an alternator that overcharges all the time, right? All right, now then. Um, so, what, let us look at what it is. Uh, the battery stator and diodes? No. Battery regulator and stator? No. Battery rotor and regulator? Well, that sounds better. That sounds better. Right? That's number four, isn't it? That's C. All right? What type of voltage is the component at the battery terminal of the AC generator? Anybody know? Is it A, DC, B, AC, C, three phase unrectified, or D, none of the above? It's actually DC. You know it's coming out of there as DC. A ground circuit voltage drop test taken on a vehicle's alternator indicates a 965 millivolt drop, which means almost one volt. Technician A says that could cause a problem in the alternator's fill current. Technician B says it could affect the output circuit of the alternator. That's number six. That's number six. That's C. It could do both of them. Now, you remember what, know what we're talking about. A ground circuit voltage drop on an alternator. How do you do a ground circuit voltage drop on an alternator? It ain't hard. What are we talking about voltage drop? What's the, where's the alternator grounded to? The block? Yeah, bingo. Okay, so if I'm going to do a voltage drop test, what am I going to do? I'm going to go from the body of the alternator to the negative battery terminal. But the alternator has to be putting out, current has to be flowing. I'm going to take one probe, put it on the body of the alternator, another probe, put it on the negative battery terminal, and I'm checking to see how much voltage is being lost. All right? So if you've got that, it, where could this be? Where would it, where was a, where's a place that this might be if you had a problem like that? What if, the, what if you had, uh, you know, rusty crud in between where the alternator mounts to the brackets and stuff? If it's totally depending on the ground of the body of the alternator being grounded to the frame. What if your negative battery terminal had a scratchy connection between the engine block and the battery? See what I mean? This is real stuff, guys. I mean, don't blow this off and say, I'll be glad when we get past this, because this is going to make the difference on whether or not that you're competent or whether you're just going to be an also ran buffoon. You don't want to be out there and say, oh, no, put it on let's get it fixed. You know, I don't hear that nonsense. You know, your boss man is going to expect you to be able to take care of this problem no, with, with, with minimal supervision. Huh? No. The alternator is actually going to ground to the battery through the engine block, basically. Now, occasionally you'll see, you know, where somebody has just run a wire from the bat from the negative side of the battery and just hooked it up somewhere because they just find a bolt and put it under it. Like they may put it, sometimes people will put a, because it's easy to get to, they'll take a bolt from the intake and they'll put the ground on that. And that's just really not a very good place to put it. It needs to be on a real good, solid part of the engine block. As a matter of fact, a lot of them, that ground wire will go right down there and it'll hook up under one of the starter bolts. Or one of the, the starter bolts have a stud off top of it. They want it as close to the starter as they can get it. Because that is where all of the, the massive amount of current flows when you're spinning it over. But anyway, uh, so basically what you're looking at here, uh, number six is going to be a C. Number seven, technician A says when testing the voltage output, 
If the charging voltage is too high, the cause could be an open field wire from the regulator. That would make it lower, wouldn't it? Yeah, that's, that, that's going to make it to where it don't charge at all. If it's got an open field wire from the regulator, you don't ever get any kind of... But if the, what if the field wire is shorted to ground? It's going to be full fielded, isn't it? I didn't want to say if, that. if, well, the field wire is actually on some vehicle, believe it or not, some of them have the, the field wire. And this is not the norm. Usually they're, it's the ground side, but ever so often on some of the older charging systems, the positive side was the side that had the field. Got that. Number seven, uh, the second one. I mean, the second part of it, technician B says a loose or glazed drive belt could be the cause of too high charging voltage. Wrong. If that sucker's slipping. Well, it's neither it's, of them, right? Yeah, it's neither one of those guys. Technician A says a shorted diode may be indicated by a waning noise in the alternator. Have you ever heard a ceiling fan? Yeah. They go, rawr, 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 rawr. that's the same kind of noise that you're hearing. Whenever you've got an alternator, it's got a, the stator, the stem wind, as I'm showing you over there. The stator actually is going to be, uh, and I, I thought I had one of those over where I could pick up and weave it. Right huh? Where? All of it. All right. Here? Here? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, it's getting cold there. Here you go. Here you go. Huh? Well, you want the whole thing? It's just like a case of it. No, I don't want the whole off. Call the windings and all. That's the whole thing. Just that little part. But anyway. That ain't, that's the whole alternator. I don't know. Yeah. Don't there was a stator over there one time. But oh, that's where it is. Second rate amateur. Okay. Now then, let's see. Technician A says a shorted diode may indicate by a whining noise. Technician B says a squealing noise may indicate a loose belt. B? Yeah, that's actually a C. That's a C. A whining noise. You know, you hear an alternator doing that. Why should an AC generator never be operated open circuit? Why should an AC generator, and, and we're talking about an AC generator, um, is basically one of your, let's say basically all there. Uh, what could it do? Number nine, that's actually a B. It could burn out electronic components. What happens is it spikes. Don't, don't ever take the battery terminal off to see if the alternator's putting out. Because the last thing I want, if I'm an electronic component like an engine controller or a body computer or any of that stuff, is to have all have, to have some sort of a massive voltage spike go screaming into my circuits. You know what I mean? Now That's like taking up, you know, having your your mama's china over here, and I say, I think I'm going to throw a rock in there and see if I can miss all of that. You know what I'm saying? You're liable to just destroy something. All right. How many output diodes does an AC generator stator with three windings usually have? Six. 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 All right. The diodes. Let's talk about the diodes. The diodes are going to be, you're going to see them on a schematic looking like this. And they're going to look like that. Right? You got that? All right. Now then, you're going to have uh, basically, let's see, they're typically going to be drawn like that, I believe. They're not pointing in opposite directions. They're pointing in the same direction, but in the middle of them is where that thing comes. I'll have to pull up a schematic of that. I'm afraid if I draw it, I'll screw it up and I'll mess up your head. But what happens is you got six. You got three negatives and three positives. And the the negative side of that whole array is hooked to the body of the alternator. The positive side of it is hooked to that big post. You got that? Negative, positive. That's how it works. And as you know, you can take an alternator and a meter. And you can tell if it's got bad diodes in it by just measuring it right there on the bench real fast if your meter's got diode check. Mm -hmm. Look at that toolbox drawer where the meters are and bring me a meter. Let's grab one for me right quick. I'm gonna show you all that while we're I'm gonna show you all that right here on tape while we can do this. And it won't take but a second to do it. That's the cool thing about it. You know what I'm saying? And it's easy, it's an easy test, yeah. If you look at all like say a fan blade or something, like make the wind spin it and create energy. You could, but you're thinking about perpetual motion. Yes. That's what you're thinking about. Could you create enough energy with the alternator to feed the alternator so that it would never stop? Right? Is that what you're thinking? No. That's physically impossible to do because of the first and second laws of thermodynamics. Whatever you're putting in is going to be more than what you're getting out. Anytime you're trying to create energy, what you're putting in is going to be less than what you're getting out. It's like charging a battery or something. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, you can make it run longer that way. 
Matter of fact, I can show you a video of what that guy brought on his truck out here. And he, he made a, a motor that he was thinking. No, a meter, not a mirror. Oh. I'm sorry. And that, one of them pop, you know, uh, we know where they're on that big box out there. I was not clear if, he, if I said a meter and he brought me a mirror. Uh, okay, let's see. Where are we at? Uh, number technician A says, when testing the charging system, the state of charge of the battery is not a concern. That's bullcrap. That is hogwash. Technician B says the battery must be checked first before checking the charging system. Who's correct about that? B. That's a B. That's a meter. Okay. Now, is this one here? This one here? Yeah, this one here's got diode check in it. Let's see if it's got good, strong battery. It does. Bring me that alternator right there. You're the gopher today. Okay. Now, he's going to hold this right here. You gotta hold it where our video camera can see it, okay? Because I gotta show this to everybody that's watching uh, in their living rooms tonight. Hold that right there. He's gonna hold this right here, and I'm gonna hold the meter right here. All right, now watch this. Watch this. We're gonna see that. I need another hand. You come over here, Wes. Yeah, I don't hear all that. Hold this right here. Hold that so that we can hold that meter right there. Just hold that meter right there, and I'm gonna show you something right here. Okay, you see my? Uh, I'm gonna touch this here, and I'm gonna touch this here. Uh -huh. You got a one. That's diode check. You see what I'm saying? Yes. That's the diode check. I'm going to touch that there and I'm going to touch that there. That's a brand new I see nothing, right? One. I'm going to touch that there and I'm going to touch that there. Oh, look at there. Hold it up. Raise it up. Raise it up. There you go. See that? If I do that and I do that, see how I'm swapping them around? Mm -hmm. If it reads the same both ways, that alternator's trash. If it doesn't read either way, the alternator's trash. However, if you get a reading like this, you still have to do further tests. See, you know what I'm saying? This is only a go, no go test if it fails. If it fails this test, it's failed, but it's just one of a battery of tests that you have to do on an alternator. Got it? Everybody got that? If you're checking, if you're wanting to know if an alternator is bad or good, you can get an idea. You can, you can condemn it that way, but you cannot exonerate it that way. You can say, aha, I'm not getting anything either way. We got diode problems in here. You understand why, you understand why that works, right? Because I'm going from the negative to the positive. There's di those diodes will read one way, but they won't read another. Those diodes only read in one direction. Did, it, did I lose anybody then with yeah. that demonstration? I, I understood. Listen, it's not complicated if you've got your... All you got to do is put it on diode check. It's supposed to read one day. It's not supposed to read the other way. It's as simple as that. I mean, that's a, that's a simple... Did you get it? Yes. Mister? Both of them are no... Huh? Uh, never mind. Both of them should not... It should not read the same both ways. In other words, it should read. It should read nothing one way, and it should read something the other way. What it reads, the what it reads, is not as important as the fact that it does read. When you're on diode check, you're not looking for exact numbers. You're going to look for you know just a reading. Got it? So that's that's easy, huh? You're going to look for yes or no, basically. Yeah, basically that's all you're looking for. And if you if you if it like I say, remember this: just because it checks good both ways doesn't mean that alternator is good. But if it checks the same both ways, it does mean it's bad. Kind of further test would you have to do? Huh? Oh, you basically got to have, well, there's a charging system tester that they like to use at the Parks House where they spin it up and they check it and see if it'll put out and that kind of stuff. They hook it up in a circuit. It ain't hard to do. I mean, you can do it pretty quick. We had one of those here. The old level thing was wore out and I did away with it. But um, it's, most of the time, you can check it right there on the car. You know, your car is spinning it already, and you can check it on the car easier than you can take it off and put it on a machine. You see? Uh, so that basically you don't see a whole lot of that kind of stuff going on except at parts houses when somebody brings one in. How many output diodes does it have? Six. Okay, number when testing a charging system, let's see, number 11 is going to be B. Uh, technician B says the battery must be checked first before checking the charging system. He's right. Technician A says the scan tool may be used to fulfill some alternators. They can if the PCM is. As a matter of fact, on that neon out there that uh, Sean's fighting with. You can take the scan tool, if you've got two-way communication, you can plug into that thing and you tell it you want to test the alternator field. You go to the one that it, that it grounds on that alternator, you can take your test light and hook up, and it's going to be turning that field off and on. Now, what, what good is that test? That test is good if your alternator is not putting out, and you want to see, can the PCM field the alternator? You turn on that scan tool, you tell it to go to a special test, you pick alternator field, you select alternator field, it starts winking it off and on. You know that wire is good, you know the PCM can do its job, you know the connection is good all the way. See what I'm saying? That's how you're, that's why you're going to do that. That's only part of the test, though. Okay? You're just testing the PCM's ability to ground the field, and you're testing the circuit that comes out there. That's what you're testing with that and all that. So uh, that's what two-way communication is good for. Okay. Um, 
Technician A says the scan tool may be used. Yes, he's right. Technician B says a field current draw test indicates that there's current available to the field windings. Who's correct about that? Both those guys are correct. A field current draw test. How much current is a field pulling? If you take the field on an alternator, the rotor on an alternator, you know you got them two slippery rings on the end where the brushes ride. But if you measure those, you ought to get about two or three ohms. You're not getting a whole lot, right? You ought to get some pretty strong ohms there. Uh, and it's going to draw some current. Okay, number 13. What does increasing the regulator field resistance mean? A. Is that number C? That's actually going to be C. Less output current is desired. Increasing the field resistance means you're putting, oh. you're actually putting less current to the field, so it's not going to, you know, be a, you're not going to have as strong a magnetism in that spinning rotor. Technician A says when testing, the ground side voltage drop should be less than 0.2 volts. Technician B says the total insulated system drop should, uh, excuse me, total insulated system drop should be less than 0.7 volts. Uh, who is correct about that? That's number 14 what SC. What is a total insulated system? Well, I'll I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to let you uh, see what your, uh, your, are you guys reading the chapters? Yeah, a little bit. In your chapters? Okay, uh, that is something that I'm going to have you to dig up and share with the rest of us. How about that? Explain. Yeah. See, what well, you need to get up here. Be prepared to do that. When you get up here tomorrow, and I'm not condemning asking questions, but you're going to burn it in better, you know. If I just throw you an answer, sometimes it, it follows you up. I want to know what the book guy said about that. Yeah, I got an idea about how I would explain it, but I don't want to conflict with the guy in the book. So get in the book, see what that guy says, and explain it to us. It'll take you about two minutes to do that. That's see what I'm saying? Great. Not a problem. You want to take care of that for me? Yeah. Yeah, you're writing a note on your thing. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Total insulated system. But check that. Anybody else that wants to research that can do that, too. Total insulated system drops. I will tell you that some of the stuff that you're learning in here, some of this stuff is really vital that you really absolutely have to know. Some of it are test questions that they just put in here. You know what I mean? Uh, these questions, I'm going to tell you the truth. These questions, if you get to where you can blow through these tests and you know these answers, you can ace an ASE test. Because ASE tests are not as hard as this. This is tougher than an ASE test. Really? Yeah, if you get to the point where you can answer these without somebody having to spoon feed you the answers, you know, you can learn, you can blow through an ASC. That's what Jesse James Duke did. He blew through every one of them because he was in his last term here and he remembered the stuff from it that was in the books. He's smart as a whip anyway. All right, let's see. Da, 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 da. Where is the output of an AC generator created? Where's it created? Well, no, the brush is actually your... The stator. Yeah, the stator is actually what I would say. It's actually in the part, that this winding that the, the rotor spins inside of. Technician A says the regulator is the cause if full fielding with the regulator bypassed produces lower than the specified output. Ha ha. Okay, what does it mean by that? Let's, i got to clarify that sometimes because these questions are not worded very well. Um, let's say that you bypass the regulator and full field, you full field the alternator, and the alternator still doesn't put out like it should. You're bypassing the regulator. How can that mean the regulator is bad? You bypass. If I bypass the regulator, it's supposed to put out wide open. It ought to go take it to the Super Bowl. If it's a good one and I bypass the regulator, I'm giving it a full field. Okay. Okay, so that guy is a yo-yo. All right, technician B says a full field test will isolate the problem if it is in the AC generator or the regulator. That's right. If you full field it in the AC generator, which would they call it the alternator and AC generator now, if it actually is puts out just like it's supposed to when you full field it, then it, but it doesn't put out when the regulator is telling it to. You know what I saw one time on a uh, little Ford pickup truck? The... Uh, charging system was overcharging because there was some voltage drop in the wire that it sensed battery power which means the battery the voltage drop there at the fuse panel coming out of the fuse panel it had a, some resistance there there was enough to field it feel the alternator but there wasn't an accurate voltage reading and so it was reading about 11.9 volts but see what I'm saying it was a read 11.9 volts and the alternator would say, well, we need to full field this sucker or put a higher, stronger field to bring that voltage up. And it was, in the battery, I'm reading like 17 volts, which was too much. And you start blowing headlight bulbs and stuff like that. 
but the uh, at the alternator when I measured it there, I'm reading 11.9. Aha! If I'm only reading 11.9 at the yellow wire with the white stripe that's coming from the fuse panel, that's the one that feeds the field, and it's also the one that it, the radiator the regulator senses how much current's in the battery. I'm reading low voltage there. I'm reading normal. I mean, real high voltage battery. I know I'm dropping voltage between here and the power source coming from there. And what I found out was, whenever the uh, somehow down in the uh, instrument, I mean down in the uh, power distribution box, there was a terminal that was pushed down and it was barely touching some kind of. I don't. Know, and it was something that came from a factory like that, and it created a problem. Initially, there wasn't a problem, but as the resistance built up, it got worse. Number sixteen, technician A says the regulator is the cause. Excuse me, 17. Excuse me, what devices are used to rectify current in an AC generator? Diodes. Everybody knows about diodes? It's a one way electric switch. In other words, try to use, unless it's a Zener diode, and then if the power goes up to a certain level, it lets current go both ways. What component carries a magnetic field current in an X, uh, AC generator? The uh, housing. Well, not the housing, actually. Uh, it's going to be B. The rotor. The part that I drew on the board a while ago, and you know there's only something like 40 thousandths of an inch clearance between that rotor and the stator core, which is stator core, huh? It's real close, yeah. Uh, technician A says a diode should be tested with a digital multimeter. The multimeter has a diode test setting, which is what I showed you guys a minute ago. Technician B says when testing with a diode with a DMM that has a diode test setting, the meter should read approximately <coughs> 0.6 volts. What was ours reading? Point seven, approximately point six. We're reading point seven, you know, in one direction and zero when the meter uh, when the leads are reversed, you know, which means the, actually zero is not, yeah, you know, number. That's actually supposed to be C, but it doesn't read anything. It doesn't read zero. It does. It reads nothing, basically, right? Uh, in a full hybrid uh, HEV, which component is responsible for recharging the twelve volt battery from the three hundred volt direct system? Wow. The D, the DC to DC converter. You know that I think that part is, that goes bad on some of these Toyota Highlanders, and it costs like ten thousand dollars. What's the point of the DC huh? to DC converter? Ah, good question. Okay, how much DC current do you have coming out of your high voltage battery? Three hundred volts. How much current do you have that you need to charge the? I mean, I say how much voltage. Oh, yeah. right. So, you understand what a transformer does? Yes. Yeah. What does it do? Transformer. Can, can you draw it? No. Okay. All right. Then. I can draw it. Can you draw it? Transformer. Oh, you're drawing Optimus Prime or something? No. Okay, right here. Here's I just give it a yeah. Well, that was draw. I don't know if that was a good marker or not. Yeah, draw. Sit right here. Right. Get it right here. I need to see it right here. Right here. Over here. Over here. You need to see it in the screen. Okay. Okay. Draw me a transformer. Okay, I want to know how this works on the inside. <laughs> Hold on a minute. Okay. I got this. Okay, all right, all right. All right. There's a crap load of, of electricity going through the wire. Right. All right. Uh -huh. Now, say this runs to a house. <laughs> all right. Power the house. It's got to be dumbed down before it reaches the house. He's right. About this. You yeah. voltage drop over the wires while it's traveling. So, this, I'm bottom. guessing, I don't, I don't know how actually that works. You're, 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 you're smart because you know that. That's good. I know what it does. This is usually like 33,000 volts and it's got to come down to yeah, that. Down I'll, show I'll show you how that works. I'll show you how that works. When I, when I get through drawing this picture, you'll know how it works. And it's not going to take me a long time to do this, okay? Right. Watch this. I got that. I've got a winding here. I've got a winding here. Because of the number of windings here and the number of windings here, I'm going to have a heck of a lot coming in here and not much coming out there. But why not? Because it's uh, inductive. Uh, okay. See what I'm saying? These aren't even touching each other. Yeah. But the magnetic field. Yeah. See, if I've got uh, coming out of here, if I've got a heck of a lot, right? I've got lots of windings here, and I've got very few windings here. Right. So where I've got very few windings, see, if I've got coming in, if I've got your... You know, 300 volts. I can actually calculate my windings and stu have stuff in such a way to where it coming out of here. I've got 14.4. Okay, I got you. All right, now I've actually got a board over there that's got a little transformer on it. That actually, I plug it into the wall, 
and it's got 120 volts going in, but coming out it's got 12. It does the same job. A, a coil, an ignition coil, is a step-up transformer. You can go the other way, too. If I put 12 volts in here, I can get 300 volts out over here. See that? Now, I'm going to swap some amps. i got to put a pretty good few amps in here right. to get that much out of there. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But that's how a transformer works. This is a real simple drawing of a transformer, but the reason you do that on a hybrid vehicle is you don't want to try to charge your 12-volt battery with 300 volts. All right. So you got to step in. Boom! And whenever those uh, contactors in there close and bring that system online, if, if you happen to be standing under the hood and you say, well, when you fire up, a, when you fire up a hybrid system, the engine may start and it may not. But I want to know if those contactors are closed, and I want to know if I've got high voltage available everywhere, and I also want to know if my DC to DC converter is sending voltage to my battery. I hook my meter to my battery that's under the hood. If I see 14 and a half volts right there, then I know that stuff is online and is working. On those hybrid vehicles, if you wanted to check the engine was running, how would you go online? There is actually a mode of operation you put that thing into where the engine will always run. See what I'm saying? I mean, there is actually a mode to doing that. It's, it's kind of tricky. I mean, they got a way of doing it. And they actually gave us a sheet when I was up there at school of uh, this. You got to do this and this and push that and hold that and it hits the brake. And <laughs> there's other stuff like that. But when it does that, it's constantly going to keep the engine running. It won't shut it up. And it won't bring it up and down. But there's also there's other stuff you got to do to put those things in special modes, too. But we talk a little bit about that when we get into hybrid vehicle stuff. But, uh, and, by the way, you see this right here? This is hybrid stuff here. AC, DC? Oh, you got that. All right. Okay, now then, that's, uh, we're on automotive electronics test eight. We're on almost, let's, let's hurry up and get through with this so we can get out in the shop because we got stuff to do. Got stuff we got to do, and I'll, I should have my cylinder head back. Um, hopefully they'll call me about it today for the yellow, yellow Jeep out there. Okay, number one. Number one. Uh, okay, right. You guys pay attention. Which of the following statements is true concerning headlight circuit? Wait a minute. Let me stop this right here. 